And now I'd be very pleased to welcome Campbell Evans, who is actually the Director of the Government and Consumer Affairs for the Scotch Whiskey Association. We are very brave to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, removing or reducing alcohol rated harm, I know, is something that we can all support. But to do this, we need to work together. And a balloon debate is, desi is designed to be divisive. And therefore, it is inconsistent with the outcome I believe we all want. Now, let me start by asking who in this room would like to see prohibition? I ask not to assess my audience, but to say that only by not having alcohol, presumably, will we not have alcohol related harm. Yet, of course, if we had prohibition, we would still have alcohol problems and other issues as well. So we need, therefore, to think that alcohol is part of our society and has been for much of mankind and take it in that way. But attitudes to alcohol differ, and they differ greatly. And if we do not address attitudes to alcohol, and particularly the current beliefs that somehow alcohol misuse and inappropriate drinking is somehow okay, we will not make much progress in tackling alcohol-related harm. Now, many in this room want greater state intervention, higher taxes, more commercial restrictions. But blanket regulatory solutions do not address the societal attitudes that we must alter. Now, today, I mean, it could be a debate about statistics, and I'm glad that Ian Gilmore agrees with me that probably is not the way forward. We might get a lot of hot air that would take us far too high for us in our balloon. But I do need to just challenge the, the faith that price is the solution, because there is evidence from across Europe that where there is greater affordability of alcohol, we still see consumption falling and harms coming down. And recently in Scotland, we have seen figures show that consumption is higher in Scotland than it is in England, yet alcohol is more expensive in Scotland and incomes are lower. So there is something else going on that we need to address. And part of that is about attitudes and changing people's behaviour. So I would argue that we must stop reinforcing the view that everybody is drinking too much and that we are somehow reinforcing the excesses that they, they undertake. For example, the Scottish Government has recently told us we're all drinking too much, and yet for the last five years, drinking has been flatlining, and indeed, we've started to see hospital discharges, one of the key measures of the Scottish Government, start to fall. In England, we've seen alcohol consumption come down, and yet hospital discharges are rising. So again, there is something else going on that is not the simple drink less and all the harms will come down as well. So I would argue there are many people who are not drinking. The majority are not drinking to the excess that we need to reduce. And we should use the power of that majority. Let us point out to those who are drinking inappropriately or drinking too much that they are not the norm. Let us challenge those people who are drinking inappropriately that they are out of step with most people. The perception of others drinking often influences an individual's own behaviour. And by talking up excess drinking as much as we are, we are legitimising those who drink to excess. Now, for those who do drink too much, let us empower them with tools to make better choices. And I agree with Professor Gilmore. I welcome the brief interventions that have been taken by medical staff and others, because they do have a real benefit and impact. We've also seen within the retail trade that bartender training reduces the drinking of those who are frontline serving staff. And through producers, we are committed to providing more information about unit awareness so that consumers can make informed choices. So these are three examples of empowering consumers, medical staff and others, retailers and producers. But how much better if we work together? For example, in the Alcohol Awareness Week in Scotland, it was doctors, retailers, producers, NHS locally and nationally, and other organisations with no connection to the drinks industry that pulled together and challenged drinkers on how much are they drinking. And it was the best received, most high awareness campaign the Scottish Government has ever done. The power of everybody getting behind the need to change society. And the Drink Aware campaign, why let good times go bad, offer similar opportunities for working together. So as I said, to my mind, a balloon debate is about throwing people out. What we need is inclusion to tackle alcohol misuse. And so what I hope is that whoever ends up in the balloon at the end, the rest of us have a soft landing and we come together in unity to address alcohol misuse.
Matthew Campbell. And finally, Paul Tui, who is the Chief Executive of Mentor, which works to improve the quality and the type of intervention into drink problems in this country. Right, okay, thank you very much. Reducing the harms of alcohol. I mean, I have to say that I, I found, having listened to uh, the three uh, gentlemen before me, um, that I, I, I found a lot of resonance in what I've just heard. But uh, ultimately, I think we have to accept that, first of all, there is no silver bullet. And whilst there's an awful lot of uh, information and knowledge and statistics from academics and so on, what we have also heard, and I think we understand, is that if we actually place the challenge to our society in general, they will rise to it, particularly in the case of alcohol misuse and young people. Because whichever way you dress it up, alcohol has been with us for centuries. It's not going to go away. We have a love affair with drink, with alcohol. And what we have to do is manage it. A love affairs can go very, very badly wrong. What we actually want is a nice harmonious marriage. And if that's going to take place, it needs to start right at the very beginning. I think the strategy that we've got at the moment in this country is more like a, a, a band-aid approach, a, a band approach rather than, than a sunscreen. And what we actually need to do is we need to protect our children from the harms of alcohol until they're ready and responsible enough to enjoy it. Unfortunately, the way society behaves is quite the reverse and young people are getting involved with alcohol at far too early an age where they cannot deal with it. And unfortunately, because that protection is not there and that exposure takes place, we are seeing now young people in their early 20s presenting with liver complaints because of the huge amounts of alcohol that they're taking. 11 to 15 year olds are not drinking as much as they used to. That is a fact that's come out in the last research. However, those young people who are drinking are drinking an awful lot more. And that's very, very damaging to their well-being and their future prospects. And that's the real key thing for me in my work at Mentor. It's about young people throwing away the potential that they have because they might be getting involved in drink in an irresponsible way, which can lead to drugs in an irresponsible way, which can damage their education, which can damage their job prospects, which damages economies, which hurts us all. So what have we got to do? Well, first of all, I think there are uh, three key things, practical things, that I can offer you in these few remaining minutes that we ought to do that can make a massive impact. The first one is in practical education for young people at schools to help get that protection block up. PSHE in schools, it's not even mandatory. It's an absolute disgrace. We'll just give them all the academic stuff, we'll have our league tables, but when it comes to actually doing practical work in schools around health of young people and well-being for their potential that can actually fuel the rest of their work that they do, it doesn't happen. School teachers do not have to do anything at all, and many do not. 60% of schools are only giving one lesson a year, if that, and what they're using in the classroom is not evidence-based. So that needs to change. I think the other thing we need to do is we need to show them that there are universal programs, that the research has been done, that can be easily brought into the classroom for them to use. So make PSHE mandatory, give teachers the tools that they can do the job with, and, and young people through their school life will be better prepared. However, it is not just the responsibility of teachers in our schools to provide that information. It is also a huge responsibility of parents and adults in society. And the other thing, practical thing that I think we can do is bring simple information to parents on how to deal with their own children, how to talk to young children about the issues of alcohol. And it comes back to some of that work we just heard that's going in Scotland. When you challenge people about their own drinking, they'll readily admit, yeah, I think I, think I drink too much. This is not a problem of uh, you know, working class people on a tenement estate in Glasgow. This is a middle class problem that's done behind closed doors, where just the way in which we behave around drink, the way we talk about it, the way we use it, can impact on the behaviour of our children without realising it. And I think some very, very simple measures of how you actually can help parents discuss alcohol with their children at the right uh, appropriate ages and at the right times combined with that work in schools all the research shows that those two things coming together has the single biggest impact in the way in which young people behave around alcohol and if you did that you would not get the kind of binge drinking culture and the general attitude around drinking which we have in the UK today and which makes us the highest drinking nation in the whole of Western Europe. So what I would say is don't look at our children's behaviour, look at your own. Thank you.